Hello everyone, welcome to weekly contest 278 and it's time for to shoot for the first question of the challenge which is count operations to obtain zero. Here in this question you are given two integers nums1 and nums2 and you can perform operations on them. So what kind of operations are allowed? You select the higher one and subtract the lower one from it. So this contributes to one set of operation. We need to identify the number of operations that are required to make either nums1 0 or nums2 0. So here they are provided us with two, one example where nums2 is equal to 3 and nums1 is equal to 2. I will be talking about these examples and the way to go about it by the presentation. So let's quickly hop on to the PPT. Count operations to obtain 0, lead code 2169. It's an easy level question on lead code. And yes, I, I agree with it. We'll be solving it using two approaches. So let's get started. So let's try and understand it by the same example where nums1 is given, given us as 2 and nums2 is given to us as 3. In the first go, what do we need to do? Let's create a variable, count variable that will store the answer and by default it will be initialized to 0. And now it's time to select the higher one, which is the higher one. The higher one is 3. What do you need to do? You can only remove the lower one from it. So you perform the first operation and the numbers get updated as 2 comma 3 minus 2 which is nothing but 1. Now we have the updated set as 2 comma 1. Again you have consumed one operation so let's increment the count to 1. Let's proceed ahead. You need to select the higher one out which is the higher one out. I see that 2 is higher than 1 as a result of which you subtract the lower value from the higher one and we get 2 minus 1 here and this remains as 1. So this gets updated to 1 and the other element also happens to be 1. Since you have consumed one more operation, the count gets incremented to 2. Now again you do the same thing. You select the higher one and subtract the other one from it. Since both of them are equal, you can choose any one of it and as a result of which, let's assume we are choosing this one as the lower one and this one as the higher one. So 1, gets, 1 minus 1 turns out to be 0 and this remains as 1 as a result of which one of the element has been updated to 0 we abort the process and return the result in totality we have performed 3 operations so the answer for this would be 3 can we optimize this further the answer is yes how let's have a look at it let's consider the case where the two elements happens to be 100 comma 3 the count variable is initialized to 0 and let's get started which one is the higher one 100 is higher than 3 as a result of it, the value gets reduced to 97 and C remains as it is. Again, the count variable gets updated to 1. You have 97 greater than 3, the count gets reduced by 3, it gets updated to 94. The second one remains as it is. The count gets updated to 2. Let's proceed ahead. This time we will reduce 94 again and it gets updated to 91 and the count will be updated to 3. And you will keep on doing it till the time you don't see that this number has become lower than 3, which would happen at 1. So in the end, after operating over 33 times, you will see that this number has become reduced to 1 and this remains as it is as 3. Why I am saying this will happen for 33 times? Because if you divide 100 by 3, you will get 33. That simply signifies you can consolidate all this process in a single shot using the division operation. This is absolute mathematics. So you divide 100 by 3, what number do you get? You get 33 and you add it to your count variable starting from 0. So it gets updated to 33 and uh, the number of elements gets updated to 100 modulus 3 which is 1 and this remains as it is. Now you again perform the similar kind of thing. Uh, you, ha you see that uh, 3 is greater than 1. L let's reduce 1 from 3 as a result of which this gets updated to 2, this remains as it is. So the count gets updated to 34. Next, what do you do? You simply uh, reduce 1 from 2, this gets updated to 1 and uh, the other one remains as it is. The two elements are something like this, 1 comma 1, the count gets updated to 35 and in the last go, you simply, you can choose any one of them and reduce the other one. One gets updated to 0, other remains as it is, as a result of which the count gets updated to 36. Now you can see that we have updated one of the element to 0 and we abort the process. What is the count value? The count value is 36 and we used division to reduce the number of iterations we were making. Let's have a look at the coding section and everything will be crystal clear there. So let's get started. 
Here in the first go, I created a variable count and initialized it to zero. While nums one is not equal to zero, neither nums two is not equal to zero. What do I do? I check the higher number. If nums one is higher than nums two, what do I do? I simply reduce nums one to nums one minus two. Else, I go for reducing nums two minus nums one. Nums two gets updated to it. With each iteration, I am incrementing the count variable by one unit. And in the end, I simply return the count value. Let's try this up. Some compilation error at line number count plus plus. Okay, sorry for the typo. Let's shoot for it again. Accepted. And how can we improvise this? Let's introduce division instead of a uh, eventual subtraction. So how can we do that? Let's update count to count is equal to count plus nums one division by nums two. Makes sense. And nums one gets updated to nums one modulus nums two. Pretty simple and straightforward. Let's copy paste again. And let's forget the statement. This time we'll do the reversal, and nums two will get updated to nums two modulus nums one. And let's skip this because it's not needed. Let's try this out. Accepted. This brings me to the end of today's session. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for being it. Have a great day. And stay tuned for more updates from Coding Decoded. I'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question. But till then, goodbye.